and they interpreted the Bible the way other rabbis did, called Midrash. Just as our parents are instrumental in shaping our values, personalities, and even our DNA, when we are born again, for better or for worse, our spiritual mentors often impact our spiritual DNA. Good shepherds raise up the sheep to spiritual maturity, others who are wolves in sheep's clothing, or we may say butchers in shepherd's clothing, end up bruising and bloodying the sheep, often scarring them psychologically, spiritually, and even theologically for life. Christian cult personalities are these self-absorbed butchers disguised as pastors and are notorious for leaving people permanently damaged. God wants to correct these mishaps of our souls, but in order to do so, we have to humbly allow Him full rights to the genome of our souls, and this can be a lifelong, painful experience. Jacob himself was saved during the hippie Jesus People revival. Hall Lindsay's best-selling The Late Great Planet Earth had millions of young hippies believing the Antichrist would arrive within 10 years. The Late Great Planet Earth. Prophecies speak of the coming of an Antichrist. Is he among us already? Many people think that because this man's called the Antichrist that he'll appear to be evil. But Satan's no fool. But now prophetic patterns exist that cannot be ignored, cannot be forgotten. And the rapture was just around the corner. Spiritual cult leaders such as Maharishi, Marshall Applewhite, Charles Manson, as well as Christian cult leaders such as Jim Jones and Tony Alamo destructively drew in millions of young people, deceiving and destroying the faith of many. Jacob sadly was drawn in by several of these cult leaders. Two especially influenced him. David Berg and Stuart Trail. Maturing under these two Christian cult personalities deeply damaged and confused Jacob psychologically and spiritually, as he states here. These cults damaged others and me both spiritually and psychologically, yet God had a purpose for me being in both for a reason. I spent the first years of my new life in Jesus being confused in these crazy groups. And here he says, fortunately, through the grace of the Lord and some encouragement from Jews for Jesus, I detoxed from the psychological and spiritual bondage of Stuart Trail's cult. Just as one ex-member explains here, the damage under Stuart deeply damages your relationship with God for years after. The nature of the damage uh, that Stuart inflicted on us is such that if you are a Christian today and you are seeking to please God, then the very thing that you're trying to do and trying to be was affected by Stuart Trail. In a future episode, we may look at the psychological impact these wolves had on Jacob, but let's focus in on the theological molding they had on him through their Bible teaching. The theological influences are quite apparent in planting the seeds for the focus of Jacob's teaching style and focus of his ministry. Both these men had an extreme focus on the Antichrist just as Jacob does. One ex-member says of David Berg's cult, members lived together in communes and banded together around the concept that an apocalypse was coming and that they were martyrs with the power to save the world from the Antichrist. From the Thessalonians, we know that he's not coming until the son of perdition is revealed. And since you can't name him, name the Antichrist and prove it, you know that he's not coming just now. You know he's delayed. They stressed current events as it relates to prophecy. The signs that we see today corresponding to the signs of the end, aren't those signs first really being apparent today with all of history being included in it? Can't we now in the hindsight of history and the understanding of scriptures which has been sealed up till the end days until now, of course there's the Israel being a nation again and able to do things. They emphasized special Bible interpretation as the line that separated them from the ignorance of Laodicea, just as Jacob does. Don't we now see all those churches in Revelation and how they fit the various stages of history and how there's no conclusion other than that we're in the last one now, the church of Laodicea. We're in that period now. 
Surprisingly, these two men also introduced Jacob to two of his signature teachings, Jacob's interseal rapture theory and Midrash-style hermeneutics, arguably the driving force behind Jacob's whole teaching ministry, were first witnessed by Jacob right under these two men. A lot of Christians were expecting to get raptured by the Lord and His second coming before the tribulation. They're going to get a shock of their lives because He's not going to do it. He Himself said so. He says right here in the 29th verse, as plain as day. After the tribulation, then shall all the tribe of the earth mourn. After the tribulation, they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. That's when Jesus is going to come back. As Jacob says in this article about the origins of the interseal rapture, it was at this time, under Stuart Trail and David Berg, that Jacob learned his post-sixth seal rapture theory, which would be the basis for his book, Harpazo. Um, he did the most studying. He taught the figure system, something that I believe he was influenced by William Jones' writing on figurative language. I don't think Stuart came up with a figure system on his own. I don't think he was inspired by the spirit about the whole figure system on his own. What Stuart believed and how he was, like what he was teaching his kind of followers or in this group, the Bible has hidden messages. What you read, it's not what it's saying. Now we have to be able to unlock these messages and get it. Stuart, little by little, he was becoming the one who understood the Bible. Stuart has the ability to read the so-called figure system that's in the Bible. Now this figure system is actually created out of two things. One is the symbolic language that I made up and I applied it to the whole Bible and then I say this is what it means in reality. Um, this brother that went with him to Ohio, I think it was Ohio on a VAC trip, owned a color-coded Bible and this is before Stuart quote invented the color code. Um, and I'm not saying that Stuart claimed that he knew that he was the only one to come up with figurative language or the color code, but the way at least it was presented to me is that these ideas were his. And the other thing is a color-coded system. I would like to mark different topics with the same color. Later on, in the future, Stewie actually brought a book that explained all of this figure system and it was completely aligned with what he was teaching. For his members, this was the proof that Stuart was telling the truth, while for Stuart, <laughs> he basically, already in the origin, stole the idea from this book and then sell it as it was his own. If you think Stuart's figure system sounds quite similar to Prash's Midrash, then you're not alone. Jacob thought this figure system was just like his Midrash as well. In this public post, Jacob states, Stuart Trail had real insights into scripture which were in fact akin to the Midrash used by rabbis in the days of Jesus, and many scholars believe Midrash was employed by Jesus and Paul. Please take special note of two important statements in this letter. First, Jacob says here that many scholars believe that Midrash is used by Paul and Jesus, but he does not claim that the Bible itself validates Midrash. Later on, Jacob will try to convince you that God endorses his Midrash and not scholars, but this is quite a deception, as we will show you in the future. Second, please note that Jacob validates Stuart's non-Jewish, self-taught style of Bible interpretation as just like his self-fashioned version of Midrash theory. Both of these points will be important for our future deep study into Jacob's version of Midrash. What Jacob recognizes as his mentor's version of Midrash was called the figure system, as you heard and had nothing to do with Midrash. It was his own self-taught figurative system and most likely inspired Jacob's own version. Interestingly, after 25 years of Stuart's figure system, he recently admitted that it was nothing but man-inspired error and not truth at all. But one thing he said a few times at the Grace meeting was, I taught error. I missed grace. I taught error for 25 years. It's basically the entire existence of the group. And Neil asked him about his teaching, the true interpretation, figurative language, all that. And Stuart's reply was, it's a, it was a bill of goods, it was a pack of lies. It's a, it was a bill of goods, it was a pack of lies. Well, that brings us to our conclusion. Both Stuart and Jacob 
appear to have elevated knowledge as the root of our relationship with God and means to salvation instead of faith. As one ex-member from a Stuart Trail recovery group on Facebook recently stated, he deluded himself into thinking he was special, that he was chosen directly by God to get God's true message out and that every other church on the planet had fallen short and backslidden. He spent 95% of his time tearing people down because, as it turns out, that is the only way the ego can build itself up. Stuart believed without his figure system of interpretation, others were just ignorant sheep and cows who would not be received by God. What is Jacob's attitude towards those with simple John 3.16 faith who are not savvy to sit as children under his midrash interpretations? What you're getting from me is crush grain. You understand? I'm breaking up the word of God exegetically and making a cake that you couldn't do for yourself unless you're a teacher. Most Christians have been given a diet of milk. To be perfectly honest, I know churches, the milk would be an improvement. They remind me of the Hindus I've seen in India who drink cow urine. I'm not joking. Milk would be an improvement. Milk is for babies. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Amen, amen, amen. I'm glad you drank your milk. Now it's time to eat the meat. Mere babies drinking milk or cow urine, unhealthy and sickly. A bit of a refresher course on John 3.16 for Jacob. Who was Jesus talking to when he spoke this verse? He was talking to Nicodemus an educated Jewish Bible teacher who was also a member of the Sanhedrin. Jesus called him the teacher of Israel. If anyone was well equipped in Midrash, Torah, and Mishnah, it was this man. Yet this esteemed and respected Bible teacher was spiritually blind and in darkness. This Bible teacher had deep Bible knowledge, but did not understand that salvation is not by knowledge, but by faith. Jesus tells him, You are Israel's teacher, and you do not understand these things? Yet one chapter later, a sinful Samaritan woman, who had very little knowledge of the scriptures, was able to see that Yeshua was the Messiah. Is it possible for a Christian Bible teacher today to be so focused on the letter of the hermeneutical law and the traditions of men that he is spiritually blind to the simple faith that God seeks? I certainly believe so. Please join us again soon as we take a deep study into Jacob's Midrash. Shalom, and God bless you all.